Hey guys. All right, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Michigan for a run. We don't get these that often, so I gotta get it in now. I'm a little bit achy. I slept last night in a tent due to my daughter's request. I don't normally do a lot of camping, but we camped out last night, so I'm a little achy. Hopefully this run's gonna help me feel a lot better. My goal for today, as far as running goes, is gonna be four miles. So I've been lacking a little bit in the cardiovascular exercise section, having a hard time getting it in. So anyway, my goal today is four miles, so I'm gonna get my watch teed up and get running here. Okay, so I'm at, let's see what I'm at here. I'm at 2.7 miles. I plan on only going a total of four miles, but it turns out I'm gonna be going over five miles. Got a little ambitious, but uh, it feels great out here. I feel great, um, but it is hot as can be. I'm sweating like crazy. So putting in about five miles and I get back. We're gonna have some talk about health. Got my morning run in, and um, I ended up going a little bit further than I anticipated, which was a great thing, because sometimes when you go out to exercise, you just don't really feel that good. But today I felt really good. So regardless of sleeping in a tent last night, I actually had an incredible run, so that was awesome. So many of you know that I use fasting in my life. I use it when I work with patients, and I think it's really an incredible tool in order to help us heal and recover, and I think it's very important for longevity purposes. I wanna talk about some of the different forms of fasting, and then after that, I wanna go into the benefits, some of the benefits of fasting, okay? So I'm gonna start from the easiest, to, and go to the hardest. So what I consider the easiest forms of fasting that is really easy for you to implement and then go to the hardest forms of fasting, which gets a little bit tougher, but it's still totally doable. I do it all the time. Trust me, it'll be okay. So intermittent fasting is when you go and you eat all your meals within an eight hour period. So that means that you're gonna eat within an eight hour period, fast for 16 hours. The reason it's so easy is because you're still eating the same amount of food. You're just eating within a certain window of time. You're supposed to be eating the same amount of calories that you would normally eat and eat like you would normally eat. However, you wanna do it in a smaller window, allowing your gut and your body the chance to heal during those other 16 hours. Now, when you're doing intermittent fasting, it's very important to be on a good quality diet. You don't wanna do intermittent fasting when you're on some really, like for instance, the standard American diet where you're eating a lot of processed foods and, and, and carbohydrates. So anyway, you wanna do intermittent fasting when you're following a diet more like the ones that are outlined in the Heal Yourself cookbook, okay? So intermittent fasting, once again, eating all your meals in an eight hour period, and then fasting for 16 hours, very doable. I do this all the time, and it's something that I really like, and it's very easy to implement. So juice fasting is something that is fairly simple as well. And it's actually, the one of the reasons I like it is because it tastes really good. So you can make some incredible tasting juices. I have an example of one right here. This right here is a mixture, it has a lot of greens in it, some carrots, it doesn't look so pleasant. However, it tastes really good. Um, so juice fasting is when you're gonna take, you know, kale and spinach and cucumber and some fruits and then you make a really good tasting juice, and you literally just drink juice for a couple days. Um, typically, I like to do three to four days. And the reason that juice fast, I think, is easier because once, again, it tastes good, you can change it up. You can have all different types of juices, and you can have uh, different flavors. And, and so, though you're not eating any solids, you're just simply drinking juice during those couple days. Like I said, uh, three to four days is what I like to do. Um, it's a really great fast to do. The reason I like the bone broth fast is because it is loaded with collagen, okay? So you get all types of collagen and minerals from the bones of whether it's 
uh, chicken or beef bones, whatever type of bone broth you're making, and you just drink that throughout the three to four day period, and you get amazing healing benefits from it. You get the benefits of it healing your gut and giving, supporting you with all that collagen, and then you also get the benefits of all the minerals from the bones. Now, an example of bone broth would be this guy right here, okay? So this is what bone broth looks like. This is actually chicken uh, bone broth. Now, for more details on how to make this stuff, I'll link an article below um, that actually has some of the details of everything I'm talking about in these episodes. Um, it's hard to get into a crazy amount of detail because I could talk here for two hours straight. And so, anyway, that's what bone broth looks like. It's probably one of my favorites. I have done four-day bone broth fast multiple times. Um, Three-day are a little bit easier to do, and the reason I think three days is easier is because you could start like on a Friday and then a Saturday and a Sunday. And when you're doing fasting, you want to do fasting during a time that you have more of an opportunity to rest, okay? So you don't want to be doing fasting when you're having a crazy work schedule or um, you know, you're running around with your kids and things are stressful. That's not the time to do fasting. Fasting should be done when you have the opportunity to rest and relax and take a nap during the day and whatever is necessary because your body's actually going through a healing process while you're fasting. The reason water fast is the hardest to do is just because it's simply water. Like you are literally going three to four days and only drinking water. A lot of it's a mental game. You know, like it, it's just that you you smell food or you see food or you dream about food, whatever it is, a lot of it's a mental game. Out of all the forms of fasting, water fast is definitely the hardest just because it's flavorless. Um, but I will say that many times that my bone broth fast turn into water fast because if you've ever fasted Fasted, when you drink anything of the same for three to four days, like in the case of a bone broth fast, you get a little bit tired of it. Day three, you're like really, I find myself, I don't want, I can't put that out there for everybody, but I find myself getting really sick of the bone broth. So I'll start drinking more water. So a lot of times my bone broth fast turn into water fast. But anyway, those are the four types of fast that um, I typically recommend. And the, like I said, the easiest is intermittent fasting all the way down to water fasting, which is certainly the hardest. And why would you even wanna do fasting in the first place? Because it doesn't sound fun it doesn't sound comfortable and you know like there's there's a lot better there's a lot better ways you probably like to spend your days and the truth is you want to do it for your health because it offers incredible benefits the first benefit I want to talk about is that fasting absolutely energizes your metabolism when you fast it allows your metabolism a chance to balance and heal and re-energize but it also helps with uh, burning fat because after you burn through your sugar stores in your body you're gonna start your body's gonna start burning fat for energy and it's gonna help you just burn that fat off while you're fasting and then from there it's also gonna help increase insulin sensitivity for the future so that when you're not fasting your body can actually store sugar much more efficiently and your metabolism works better and you feel so much better fasting also does incredible things for your brain it actually increases brain derived neurotrophic factor which is a chemical in the brain that actually protects us from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and many of these, these neurodegenerative diseases. So when you fast, you're increasing your metabolism so far recovered and you're actually boosting your brain. Now the third reason fasting is so beneficial is because it gives you an opportunity to work on healing your intestinal tract. Your intestinal tract works 24-7 all the time. Even at night, it's still working. And so when you fast, it gives this the intestines and the gut the chance to to rest, to heal, to rebalance out the bacteria within the gut. It helps to heal the digestive tract, the gap junctions, get all the toxins out, and it, get, it really does an amazing job. Now the fourth reason fasting is beneficial is because it helps clear your skin up and help your skin look really vibrant. When I first started fasting to help with my skin issues, they cleared up almost within the first 24 to 48 hours of fasting. So fasting also boosts your immune system, and that's number five. Now, when they done some, did some different studies on rats and mice, what they found is that the, the mice that were 
um, put into a fasted state on a regular basis, they had less factors in their blood that actually did, gave the indication that they were going to develop diseases related to a lot of oxidative stress. And so when you fast, it helps balance your immune system, reduce a lot of disease factors within your blood, and also um, reduce oxidative stress, which is ultimately going to re reduce inflammation in the body. Now, the sixth benefit of fasting that I want to talk about is longevity. Okay, so in America, the average lifespan is right around somewhere, I, I'd like to say 72 off the top of my head. Now, there's areas in the around the world where people are living to 110 years old. You know, for instance, like there's areas like uh, in uh, Japan where the Okinawans live until you know, the ripe old age where these guys are 100 plus years old and they're still farming, they're still going about their tribe and doing the duties that they would normally do. Um, and so when we look at our genetic code, it's estimated that we're, as humans, designed to live to about 120 years old. So there's a big problem if we're only living to 75 on average in America. And the truth is, is that most people who are living to 75 aren't living a very high quality of life, right? So that's 75 on how many prescription medications, 75 with how many degenerative diseases at that time. Not only is quantity of life important, but quality of life is probably even more important to somebody. When we talk about fasting and longevity, it's very important to put the two together and realize that it's really necessary to have fasting in your life in order to really support that longevity. When they did a study with different mice, what they found is that they had two different groups, okay? The one group, they were allowed to just eat whenever they wanted. The, the mice could just graze all day long. And then the other group, they were required to fast two times a month for a period of four days. Now, what they found is that the group of mice that they required to fast uh, for four days, twice a month, they actually outlived the group that was grazing all day by three months. So three months might not sound like it's uh, that much. However, when you look at the average lifespan of a mouse, it's right around two years. So three months is enormously significant. Another way that fasting really promotes longevity is by boosting your human growth hormone. Now, when you look at someone who's in a fasted state or somebody who has f fasted using intermittent fasting, there's, tests, there's studies done where there's been increases of human growth hormone by 1,300% and 2,000%. Now, when you go in and you start to increase human growth hormone by those kinds of levels, it is allowing your body to heal, recover, and reduce inflammation. So those are all the things that I wanted to discuss as far as fasting goes, okay? So we talked about the different types of fasting, my favorite type of fasting, some of the benefits of fasting, and I will link below this video some, some more information on it. Benefits of fasting can't be ignored because it is literally a game changer for so many people who are trying it. So if I was suffering from some sort of condition, I would do fasting without um, support from a physician. If I'm a perfectly healthy person or somebody who's just suffering from some skin irritation or something like that, I would have no problem doing fasting personally. So I think if you start utilizing this in your life, you'll be really happy. I would start with intermittent fasting because as I mentioned, it's just the easiest to go in and, and start doing on a regular basis. So that completes our health topic for this week. Every week we're gonna continue to dive into different health topics and really just enjoy this whole process. And hopefully I can just really give you the education you need in order to help skyrocket your health. Um, um, but that's it for today. Now I got to get ready. My wife and I are going on a date this afternoon. It's important uh, as married couples to make sure you're making time for yourself with two kids and another one on the way. And, you know, working, it's, it's, I find it very difficult in order to make time. Um, but it's very important in order to cultivate a good quality relationship. And um, I think it's important for your happiness as well. <music>so we're on our way to dinner right now I told you we we're going on a date with my, my wife and I and we are fighting construction and traffic so we'll, we'll see how this goes it's taking a little bit longer than anticipated that's for sure So how does everything taste? It's awesome. Oh my goodness. The beef short ribs are like melt in your mouth good. 
Um, the Brussels sprouts are awesome. I love balsamic on my Brussels sprout, so I think it's like a perfect combo. And honestly, the Gouda polenta is actually really good. Awesome, awesome. Rest. That and some Pellegrino water. It's a pet peeve of mine. You go to restaurants and they serve you uh, tap water. I don't like drinking out of a pool, so I'll, I'll pass on the chlorine, but this is dinner, so we're gonna enjoy it. Back to our date. So how was dinner, Ashley? It was awesome, but the company was even better. Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> this wraps it up for the end of the vlog for the day. Hope you loved it. All right, peace out. Bye.